I am Assemblywoman Eileen Tidla from the Philippines. I am a legislator within the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao that is uh, a region in which uh, from among the 16 regions in the Philippines. You see we have the autonomous government so we call ourselves Assemblywoman or Assemblyman as legislators of that region. In, the, in our assembly, there are only four women who were successfully or victorious in the recent election of 2016. At first, during the 2014, when we were appointed by the president, President Benigno Simeon Aquino Jr., we were eight as an appointed women legislators, assembly women, shall uh, they call it assembly women. However, in the actual political election, political election process, this 2016, only four made it to the assembly. So the challenges here is that we just have to be uh, focused, determined to achieving our goals. Because as legislator, there are many things that we can achieve and can be of help to our women uh, so that the rights are observed, they are protected, and that they are also secured. As a legislator, we can think of many important laws, especially today, that I'm now uh, listening to other members of the parliament in other uh, states. We can put into the women economic empowerment as an important agenda. You see, there are only few women who are interested in going into politics. Number one reason is that the funding. Because as a mother or as a sister, you always think of the budget of the family. You don't like to spend uh, because just for attain the victory in politics, there, there's so much to spend. And, and number two is that if you have a supportive husband who understands your goals and your dreams, uh, the reasons why you want to be a legislator, then you will be lucky. Uh, just like uh, in my personal experience, I have this uh, experience of a support, uh, very supportive family members. And, and finally, is that the barrier is that uh, there is this so-called uh, mindset that only men can do it in the politics, that uh, women uh, are seen to be just, uh, you know, a support system, but not really the prime movers in terms of policy making uh, decision or the, to be a member of a policy making body. So I, I encourage other women in all the countries to really be involved because this is how we can help other women who are not into policy making body to be able to realize or to think of things that, that are important in our lives as women. Of course, we also consider the lives of the girls, the young generation, and I believe that through policy, through laws, we will be able to enhance whatever is lo the present laws are that is for our women and girls. And in addition to that is that I believe that we have to include the women economic empowerment into the curriculum. In school, let us start with a financial literacy program for the young girls and our women who are the mothers, uh, because when you have this kind of knowledge, financial literacy, I, I think this will help as a foundation for women economic empowerment. And besides, if this will be supported very strongly by a law that the inclusion of uh, financial literacy into the programs of education starting from uh, the secondary education until the tertiary education then that will really be all right maybe in in the elementary education we can start with 
a small like uh, a small business thinking of how a business should start or just like uh, a small a small kind example uh, of uh, a small business just to encourage young the young generation to appreciate what is to be economically empowered so I, I think the UN uh, women and also the interparliamentary group to have this kind of meetings so that we can share what the important things uh, in relation to policy making in our respective country and that somehow someday we can also contribute to the policies all over the world that geared towards women economic empowerment.